Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Thinking in Scale Level 3, Scale and Perspective. After watching this video, you should be able to use scale to determine perspective in common day objects like a hat, or even in a phenomena where we have to start thinking about particles like a balloon inflating and deflating. I'm going to start by using scale to determine perspective in a painting, and then we'll work on the apple together. So, the big thing we should always do when we're trying to determine perspective is first decide on the system. What system are we going to investigate? And then within that system, what scale are we going to be? Are we going to be at the small scale or the very large scale? Remember, our object for scale is this pyramid because it shows from the very small to the very large. But even if you think about this object, which is made of wood, imagine if we're thinking it about the scale of the particles within the wood. So that gives us a totally different perspective. So what is perspective? It requires an observer. It's what we see at a specific scale within a system. So let me clear this out of the way and get started with this painting. Okay, so the first thing we should always do uh, is write up the system. What system are we investigating? So the system that we're going to investigate is going to be this painting. Obviously the life side painting is much larger than this, but we just have a, a copy of it. So let's set that up as our specific scale. So I've placed this underneath scale. So at what scale we're looking at, we're looking at the scale of the painting itself. Now I'm going to go vertically here and show you the different hierarchy that we have above and below that painting. So I've had up, set up a hierarchy here. So the painting is right here in my scale. What's bigger than that, obviously, is the painting and the artist who painted it. What's smaller than that, in the painting you have some grass, and then within the grass you see these little points that make up not only the grass but the whole painting. So I see these different scales. So this is a system which contains a system, which contains a system, which contains a system. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to try to determine what does perspective tell us. And so what is perspective? Perspective requires an observer. So I'm going to put in an I here. And what that represents is if I am looking at it at the level or the scale level of the painting, what do I notice at this level? And how might that change when I move to a different perspective? And so let's start with the painting. What is the thing that I notice just at the level of the painting itself? So the per first perspective that I have at this level of the painting is this is just a landscape. So we're looking at a landscape. It looks like it's sunny. It looks like it's maybe summertime. And so that gives me a certain perspective, but that's based on the level that I'm at. So let's move it to a different perspective. What are some things no that I notice when I go to a higher level? Well, I have to look outside the painting itself. So I see women at the well, and I see that's by Paul Signac. And I could say, like, I know that is a French artist. So let me write that down from a different perspective. So at this level, I know by looking at the painting and the artist itself, not only is it a landscape, but it's painted by a French artist. And so now I maybe go down to a smaller level and I'm going to look at the level of the grass and then maybe at the level of the point. So let me fill that in. So at the level of the grass, I notice that the grass has these waves in it, which kind of match the waves that you have in the ocean. So that gives me a new perspective on the painting. And another thing I notice is that when I'm looking at the scale level of the points, one thing I notice is that I only see three colors of points. And so I see green dots of paint, yellow dots of paint, and then blue dots of paint. And so that reminds me of something totally familiar. 
And so that reminds me of a movement in art where we call it pointillism, where you're actually making a large painting made out of a lot of different points. And so you can see as I move up and down at different scales, I have a different perspective on the phenomena. And so I'm gonna take a second and clean all this off and then I'm gonna give you a system of your own to look at both scale and perspective. Okay, for the second example, I'd like to have you try it. We're gonna look at different scale within systems, uh, including an apple. So let me define what the system is and get us started on the scale. So we've defined the system as the apple. I moved it over here so we have room above and below the apple so we can start thinking about scale. So what I'd like to have you do is think about the apple, define first of all what's above that, what system contains an apple, and what systems are contained within an apple, and then start writing down some observations at each of these different levels. Now it's easy for you to do the apple because it's right here, but I, where does the apple come from? So I'll also include in the thinking slides a picture of an apple tree and inside the apple we've got a core from a couple of different views and then the seeds themselves. So pause the video, take a minute to define what the scale is or the hierarchy within the systems and then start writing down the perspectives that you have. Then unpause the video and I'll show you my thinking. All right, so hopefully you've uh, done some thinking around this uh, different Apple system. First of all, let me define the different scales. So you can see I've set it from the apple to the apple tree, and then the apple contains the core which contains seeds. You can see the scale here. We're going from the very big or the larger hierarchy of systems down to the small. The next thing is to write down my perspectives. What do I see at each level? First of all, it helped me to spread these out so I can see what I'm really looking at. Okay, so if I move my perspective around, I would say at the level of an apple tree, it looks like all the apples are ripe. They all seem to be red, so they must be going ripe at the same time. I've then got at the perspective of an apple that it's a red and green apple. I can see that there are some stripes on the apple itself. If I look at the core, at the level of the core, I can see the core is kind of greenish compared to the white flesh around it, and there's this weird star pattern that I don't normally see, but I would see if I cut my apples in a different direction. And then at the level of the seeds, I can see that they're brown in color. And there are these little points that are coming out underneath it. So that gives me a new perspective. So again, the scale not only tells you how systems are organized, but it gives you brand new perspectives. That will become important in science as we dig in. So I put some thinking slides below. What I'd love to have you try is use a common object, just like a, a hat for an example, but then dig into something that's more of a science phenomena, like a balloon. Uh, what does a balloon look like? What are the parts within the parts within the parts? You're really gonna start getting into the level of particles. And so that's the key, and that's the key of this lesson. If we really understand there are different scales within a system, it gives us totally different perspectives. It becomes super important when we start looking at particles and even atoms and molecules like that. So that's level three scale and perspective, and I hope that was helpful.